beautiful. All right, we've had a great morning so far. We are on our boat today, our offshore pro line, and we've got Frank aboard, and today we're doing some mullet run fishing. This morning, we got out a little late, around 7.30. We didn't have our boat out the night before, but we came out here offshore looking for the schools of mullet. We found them right here. They're about a mile to two miles to north of Boynton Beach Inlet. Just got out of the boat, got onto the beach, and just threw my cast net twice and loaded up on like four or five dozen big mullets. So that's really important. Got a bunch of bait for the day, and I think we're gonna head out, but one of the guys on shore that I just met, he told me there was a bunch of black tip sharks and hammerhead sharks around the schools. What'd you say? So it was a little nerve wracking being in waist high water with all that bait, but made it back safely. So now I think we're gonna head offshore and catch some real fish. trolling now we headed offshore didn't see anything so now we're back in shallow and we're basically slow trolling between 100 and 300 feet of water and we're actually off the martini tower that's a well-known um, landmark and we've got like a little four foot hammerhead shark that won't leave us alone he's right here in the in the back of the boat so I think we're gonna make a move but I just want to tell you guys really quick about what we're doing fishing wise and how we're slow trolling today we have four lines out and we're not using our outriggers currently but we have our two T's. We've got a T here and a T on the other side. And with our down baits, we're using something called the balloon clip. And we have live mullet that we're using. We have them on circle hooks. And the ones that are down deep, we actually have them on, I'm sorry, not a circle hook. We have it on a wire kingfish rig. So we've got a J hook and then we've got a stinger hook with a treble hook on the end. And so they have weights. So that way they get down deeper in the water column and we're using this balloon fisher king um, clip right here and this clips onto your line and we have a weight attached to it so this is actually not a good example but this is how it looks then we attach it to our bottom line so those are down deep we have one with a heavier weight one with a lighter weight so they're you know off a center so that way they're not going to get tangled together and then for our top baits we just have circle hooks and we're using 40 pound fluorocarbon leader and we're, we're matching our circle hooks to the size of our baits so I believe we're using 6-0, 6 circle hooks today with our live mullet. We have big old mullets today. Um, so, and we've got this shark still here. I actually see him right now. So I don't know, we need to get out of here or move or something. Sharks are not a good thing to have in your spread. Maybe we can catch him, I don't know. Hopefully he'll hit. Um, but yeah, that's what we're doing today. And hopefully we can catch a fish. All right, so Jesus M wrote, do you guys prefer another type of bait instead of finger mullet, or are they the best of the best bait? Um, and to answer Jesus' question, it really just depends on what is around that time of the year, and it, it varies, you know, different times of the year. Mullet are always a good type of bait to use, but they're not always here, and you can't always catch them. So, um, you know, when the mullet are around, we use them. We like to use baits that are, that are, you know, actually here at that certain time of the year because that's what the fish are actually biting. So, yes, we love to use mullet, but depending on the time of the year, we'll use greenies, pilchards, blue runners, live goggle eyes, and stuff like that. All right, next question. So, Walter Lienim, I think that's how you pronounce your last name, he said, have you been turned into a bass fishing person? Um, I would say I enjoy all types of fishing, whether it's bass fishing or offshore saltwater. I prefer the offshore and the blue water. It's just a lot more fun for me and I love to catch big fish. All right, next question is from Marcel Calat, Calette, I think. He said, Darcizzle, you fish Montauk or North Shore of Long Island? And I believe, did I fish Montauk? I, don't, I, I fished. I fished some inlet up there. I'm not 100% sure what inlet. Brian's gonna answer that. <laughs> okay, I'm from Bellport on Long Island. And we fished, uh, we went fluke fishing out of Shinnecock once, and we fished Marucha's Inlet once. Well, well, I fished all over the place over there, but Darcy fished uh, Marucha's Inlet once for striped bass, and we caught one. Well, someone on the boat caught one. And we also fished out of Shinnecock 
fluke fishing on some uh, charter boat up there, which has a, had a wonderful female mate. And Darcy got her rear end handed to her by like an eight-year-old girl who caught way more fluke than her, right? Yeah. <laughs> so that's that. We've never, she's never fished out of Montauk, but we'd love to get there. Maybe Chris Spies will take us there one day. All right, back to Darcy. Rod Palm, he said, was that a shark in the middle of those mullets, Darcy? And it was actually a massive tarpon. It was like a big 100 pounder at least. He was huge, one tarpon. Let me interject here. Here's the footage, right? Here. All right, so I'm gonna do one more question for you guys right now. Let me just find one. I have scrolled through a bunch. T Butch 130, and he said, Cool video, but since when is a mile off the beach offshore? LOL. And this is about one of my um, Donald Trump videos. I was visiting the Mar-a-Lago home as we were cruising offshore. He has a beach house right here in Florida off Palm Beach. And um, basically he's asking about why is a mile considered offshore? That's how it is here in Florida. We, you know, anything that you go through an inlet and you're offshore and you're in open water and you have land on one side of you, that's offshore. So whether we're you know 20 feet from the beach or we're a mile offshore, that or we're a mile from the beach, that's still offshore to us. So we're offshore, and then when we're inside and we have land on both sides of us and we're landlocked, that's inshore. So that's just how we you know refer to those terms, and we call it you know offshore and inshore. So there you go with those questions. I hope you enjoyed that. Let me know if you want me to do more questions for in, pre in future videos. And be, feel free to go ahead and just comment below. Ask me as many questions as you want. I'm happy to answer them all. I love looking at you guys' comments. Um, so yeah, sound. He is hooked good. We're killing it. Big ass shark, I think. I get one little, one little crank. And the fish takes 50 feet of line. Line up. Right. Here he goes, taking more line again. I'm just losing line. Monster fish on the wreck. Woo! Oh my god. There's some weight on this pole. That was a monster shark. We're using the jig on the wreck on the sky cliff here in Boynton Beach. And it's about 200 feet of water, so you gotta drop your line down pretty far and just hooked up on a monster fish. Fish took a monster run. No stopping that fish, so it's probably a shark and it just broke. So we'll see if we get the jig back or not. Big fish. Get that star rod bent over. Yeah, the jig's gone. All right, so we were very unsuccessful jigging and fishing with live bait on the sky cliff here in Boynton. We did terrible. I'm really frustrated right now and pretty like disappointed and just like depressed over this. <laughs> Especially with another boat right next to me, about a 15 foot like bay boat with one guy on it and the guy is crushing it next to us. I mean crushing it. I mean catching African pompano, uh, rainbow runners, two monster mutton snappers, like monster. And we were like within 50 feet of him watching him bring up all these fish. Uh, so I really think he had a different bait than us too. I think that had a lot to do with it as well. Some little tiny bait like a pilchard he was using. And we've got big old mullets and we only got a couple hits down there. One, we got a shark and then um, a couple other times we brought it up and we got stuck in the wreck got stuck in the wreck from a fish pulling us in there. And then a bunch of other times I got my weight stuck on the bottom. Um, so I don't know why we can't do what that guy was doing because he killed it while we were here the whole entire time. He caught fish nonstop. So that's why I'm so frustrated. Um, I really want to learn how to do this, especially here at the Sky Cliff. So we're going to be back and going to get those mutton snappers here because they were huge. I mean, I couldn't believe it. I was just shocked. So anyways, that's fishing. You know, we're the sucky boat. That's a good boat. What are you going to do? Um, and you know, tomorrow's a new day. Looking forward to the CCA event tonight, the sixth annual Coastal Conservation Association dinner and banquet. So looking forward to that. We have the auction tonight to raffle off the full day offshore fishing adventure. Um, so we got to go in. There's some storms brewing. It's about 2.30 in the afternoon and got to get ready for tonight. So overall, good day, but um, we're looking forward to the dinner. I'm starving. Bye.
bottom lip is like peeling. We just arrived at the CCA dinner. So we are gonna walk over. It looks like it's packed. A lot of people are here. And um, so we kind of moved into the next parking lot and we're gonna walk across. So let's go. I'm looking around real quick. Look, it's Captain Pat. Captain Jack. Captain, it's Captain Jack dressed up. day, a day in the life of Dar Sizzle, so you see what I do every single day. I'm about to get up in eight hours and do it all over again and get up super early, hit the ocean hardcore and do some fishing. But the CCA event was great. It was the sixth annual South, Ch South Palm Beach chapter. It was a great event, ton of people, met a ton of people, talked to a bunch of people about fishing, and my, my fishing trip for the offshore adventure bidded for $1,100. So that's a great amount of money. I'm super stoked. I met the person I'm fishing with. Super excited to go fishing and catch a ton of fish. So really great event and just wrapping up a great day. Looking forward to getting some sleep and hitting the ocean tomorrow morning. So I'll see you guys then. If you guys are interested in checking out the CCA event, click the description below. You'll find all the information you need if you want to sign up and become a member or find out more information about it. It's an awesome organization, nonprofit. Um, so yeah, if you like this video, give it a thumbs up. Be sure to subscribe and I'll see you guys in about eight hours. Until then, follow your dream and keep on catching.